How big of a cycle must any graph contain? Well, if the graph, say, G, has a minimum degree delta that's greater than or equal to 2, then it must contain a cycle of length at least delta plus 1, a length at least 1 greater than the minimum degree of the graph. And that's what we'll be proving in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer requested video. The viewer question was specifically about a graph with minimum degree equal to 3, but we're proving the result in general for all minimum degrees that are at least two. Quickly, let's see why this result doesn't hold for minimum degrees that are less than two. Say that a graph has minimum degree zero, then this result would state that G must contain a cycle of length at least zero plus one, or one. Now, the minimum length of a cycle is three, so we're certainly not gonna have a cycle of length one. An example of a graph with minimum degree zero and no cycle would be the complete graph on a single vertex, the trivial graph. This has one vertex, its minimum degree is zero, and it has no cycle. If a graph has minimum degree delta equal to one, then our result would be stating that this graph must contain a cycle of length at least one plus one, which is two. Again, there are no cycles of length two, so if our graph were to have a cycle, it would have to be at least length three. But of course, we could find a graph with minimum degree one that has no cycles. This is the complete graph on two vertices. Its minimum degree is one, and it has no cycles. But as long as the minimum degree is greater than or equal to 2, then our result holds. Let's go ahead and get into the proof. We'll begin by considering what is often a useful object in these basic graph theory proofs, a longest path in our graph. So we say let P be a longest path in our graph G that has minimum degree at least 2. And we're saying that the path P consists of vertices V0, then V1, and so on, all the way up through VK minus 1 and some final vertex VK. I've said it many times before, but what's useful about considering a longest path? Well, perhaps the most useful thing is the information that we get about our last vertex, VK. VK has at least delta neighbors, and we know that all of those at least delta neighbors must lie among the other vertices in the path. And of course, VK has at least delta neighbors because that's the minimum degree of our graph. If VK had any neighbor not on the path, then we could extend the path by joining that other neighbor VK to the end of the path, which would be a longer path contradicting the definition of P as a longest path in our graph. So all of the at least delta neighbors of VK lie among these other vertices in our path. Now, since we know that all of VK's neighbors must lie among these other vertices in the path, and we know that VK has at least two neighbors, so VK minus one isn't VK's only neighbor. Since we know all of that, we know that we do have a cycle here. We have a cycle that consists of some other neighbor of VK, and then traveling through the end of the path to VK, and then all the way back to that neighbor. But to make this hypothetical cycle as long as possible in order to prove our result, we would want to consider the first neighbor of VK on the path. That way we would have the longest cycle that we could get. So we say let VI be the first neighbor of VK that is on our path P. So maybe we just write VI right there to arbitrarily represent its position in the path. So then certainly we can go from VI all the way through to the end of the path and then back to VI since VI is a neighbor of VK and this is a cycle. And remember, it's important for us to take the first neighbor of VK because if there was some neighbor of VK other than VI earlier in the path, we could get a bigger cycle by starting at that earlier vertex. Since we're trying to get a cycle of length at least delta plus one, we're trying to get as long of a cycle as possible to make sure we hit this length to prove our result. So since we know we've got this cycle here, let's take a closer look at it to see what its length is. Maybe it's long enough. 
So this in orange is what our cycle looks like. We start at VI, the first neighbor of VK on the path, and then proceed along our longest path P all the way to that final vertex VK. Then since we know that VI is a neighbor of VK, we can complete the cycle by going from VK back to VI. All right, now what is the length of this cycle? Well, for starters, let's just consider from VI to VK. Certainly the number of vertices from V0 to VK is K plus one. That's a total of K plus one vertices. However, VI to VK does not contain all of those K plus one vertices. In particular, we miss out on the vertices V0 all the way up through the vertex that precedes VI, that is VI minus one. So these are those vertices not included in our path. That's a total of I vertices. From V0 to VI minus one is a total of I vertices. So we might subtract I from this amount. So from VI to VK, those are all of the distinct vertices in our cycle. Then we return to the original vertex VI, but all of the distinct vertices in our cycle, there's a total of K plus one minus I of them, which means the length of this cycle is K plus one minus I. Just like, for example, how the length of a cycle with three vertices is three. The number of distinct vertices in a cycle is equal to its length. So this is the length of our cycle, but how does this length compare to the minimum degree of the graph, delta? Remember, our objective is to prove that we have a cycle of length at least delta plus one. So how does this amount, this length, compare to delta? Well, remember, from VI to VK is a total of K plus one minus I vertices. Thus, from VI all the way up to VK minus one, all of these vertices that proceed VK, that must be a total of K minus I vertices, since it's one less vertex than in this count. And what do we know about these K minus I vertices? Well, since this is just a piece of our longest path P, and we know that all of VK's neighbors lie on P, and we know that VI is the first neighbor of VK that's on the path, we know that all of the neighbors of VK must lie among these K minus I vertices. Thus, K minus I must be greater than or equal to delta to accommodate those at least delta neighbors of VK. Let's say that one more time. Since P is a longest path in our graph, that's how we know that all all of VK's neighbors must be among these vertices on the path. However, since we've identified VI as the first neighbor of VK on our path, we know that all the neighbors of VK must lie between VI and VK minus one, must lie among all of these K minus I vertices. So those K minus I vertices must be at least delta vertices to accommodate those minimum of delta neighbors. So if K minus I is greater than or equal to delta, then how must the length of our cycle compare to delta? Well, since K minus I is greater than or equal to delta, we know that K plus one minus I is greater than or equal to delta plus one, just adding one to both sides of the inequality. So our cycle, in fact, has a length that is at least delta plus one as desired. And so we've proven that a graph with minimum degree delta greater than or equal to two must contain a cycle of length at least delta plus one, a cycle whose length is at least one greater than the minimum degree of the graph. And I hope this video helped you understand the proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.